Hi everybody, Mrs. Mancuso. We are talking about organic chemistry and we are gonna talk about the different classes of organic molecules. So we know to be organic, you have to have carbon and it's always got hydrogen too. But now we're gonna add another element like oxygen. We're also going to talk about maybe nitrogen getting in there or chlorine or bromine or iodine, some halogen. All right, so these classes of organic molecules are all on table R. So here's how you read table R. First of all, I would go to the second group because this is the classification. This is what you're gonna look for in your molecule. A functional group is what is unique about your molecule. So does it have a halogen? Does it have an OH? Does it have an O in the middle of the chain? On the end, is there a carbon with a double bonded O? And because of that H, I know I'm on the end. This one, in the middle of the chain, is there a carbon with a double bonded O? Is there a carbon with a double bonded O and an O and then still more carbons on either side of your chain? Is there a nitrogen in there? Or is there a carbon with a double bonded O and a nitrogen? So these are all the different functional groups and they give you examples and names. So that's how you're gonna be able to name it. So let me just give you an example. Okay, so here is my molecule and I circle what's unique, carbon with a double bonded O in the middle of the chain and then I go over here to functional groups and I find it, there it is. It's not on the end, but it's in the middle. So that makes this molecule a ketone. And to name it, I'm gonna count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six is hex. And I look at how they've named it. So they named this one two pentanone. So the two tells me where the double bonded O is and unknown is the ending. So hex unknown. And then I wanna count from the shortest side. So that means I wanna count this direction. So three hex unknown would be the name. All right, let's try another. Okay, so I circle what's unique and then I go find it. So it's not an organic acid because it's not on the end with an OH. Here it is, it's an ester. It's got the double bonded O and an O after it. And I look at how they named it, methyl propanoate. Well, I know methyl is one carbon, so the one carbon is the branch that comes after the oxygen. Prope, there are three carbons in the main chain. So propanoate. So I look at mine, one, two, three. I also have propanoate, propanoate. Okay, and then after it, my branch has two carbons, so that's ethyl. So this is an ester, that's the class, and the name of it would be ethyl propanoate. All right, so that is how you read table R. Next thing I wanna talk about are organic reactions. And there are seven different organic reactions. So uh, let's start off with addition. Addition obviously sounds like you're adding things together. So you are gonna take two molecules. One has to be unsaturated. And the other one can be hydrogen or like chlorine, something like that. And you break this double bond and you add them together. So I'm gonna break it and put a single bond there. I'm gonna add one of the chlorines here and one of the chlorines here. This would have already had two H's here and two H's here to complete that four bond rule. And it still has the two H's there and the two H's there. So we started off with C2H4 plus Cl2, and then you just add them all together. They are all in one molecule now. So C2H4Cl2. It is no longer unsaturated though. All right, next one, substitution. 
The great thing about these organic reactions is that they really, um, they are what they sound like they're gonna be. So a substitution means a switch. So this time, I start with an alkane, not unsaturated, all right? And I'm still gonna have my chlorine, but this time I'm just gonna switch one of these H's with one of these CL's. So I end up, oops, sorry, I could go like that. There we go. I end up with a chlorine here, um, and I still have H's around the outside. So the H that was right here has now switched with one of these chlorines. I have two products. Since it wasn't unsaturated, I don't have spots to add them in, so I have to just switch one out. Addition, you add them together. This one, you just switch one. All right, the next one is combustion. And to combust means to burn. So we could start um, with a molecule like C3H8, and you have to add oxygen to have a fire, to have burning. The products of combustion are always the same, carbon dioxide and water. Very, very, very easy to recognize. Think of yourself, you burn food, and when you burn food, you breathe out carbon dioxide and you breathe out water vapor. That, those are the two products of the organic reaction of combustion happening in your body. All right, now if we wanted to balance this out, because a lot of balancing comes up on this test. Three carbons, so I put a three carbon there. Eight H's, so I put a four there to give me eight H's. Now I add up my O's. This is four O's, three times two, this is six O's. So I have 10 O's, so I would need a five there to balance that out. So that's combustion. The next one is called fermentation. So if you ferment, you make alcohol. So that is the first noticeable thing. We could start off with like sugar, C6, H12O6. Don't add any oxygen, because it's not combustion. And this time make an alcohol, like C2H5OH. That's an alcohol, that's the noticeable product. It also makes carbon dioxide in that process. All right, the next one's called saponification. And that's if you take a long hydrocarbon and you add a strong base and you make soap. So they usually don't draw out the chemical formulas. They usually write, hey, saponification makes soap. S-O-A-P. If you rearrange the first letters, you, that also reminds you that this is the reaction that makes soap. Um, and why is that important? Um, because there are so many different soaps that we use every single day. So this industry is actually a very important industry. Every kind of cleaning product and health product. All right, uh, the next one is polymerization. And so polymer means to connect. Take little monomers and connect them. So now it's gonna look like this and that's a polymer. So very often it'll say like, oh, N of this molecule makes this molecule to the nth. So the N means a large number. So you are taking a monomer and you are connecting them all to make a polymer. All right, and the last organic reaction that you need to know is called esterification. And once again, it didn't let us nap down. The name tells us what it is. This is making an ester. So an ester is a molecule that looks like this. It's got a carbon with a double bonded O and an oxygen in the middle of a chain. So this one, this carbon over here that is the branch used to be an alcohol. So I put an OH on it. This would be methanol, because it's only one carbon. And then this part used to be an organic acid. So C, C with a double bonded O and an OH, that would be ethanoic acid. So you always take an organic acid plus an alcohol and you make an ester. The other product is you've taken off the H from this and the OH from this, so the other product is water. All right, thanks for joining me.